it's mailbag time. I've got a bunch of stuff. Loads of stuff. I've also got a lesson for you too. If you go out and use it on sun, put sunscreen on your feet if you're wearing sandals. I've got so many other packages, I decided to do a bunch of these. Oh, this is one I'm going to do now. And the other ones which are left over, I'll, I'll just do it next to my bag. So you will see them, just not right now. I've just got too many things to do right now. Oh, it's like some rubber mat. Just some rubber padding. I've bought, I think, a, a few different ones actually. Don't know which one this is. But I got this thinking, it's, I thought it'd be a good sounding material for underneath bits of test gear, so like, or bits of equipment. So my um, hot air station up there, that's currently sitting on some cloth to try and help stop any vibration noise coming through the shelf to help keep it a bit quieter. I thought I'd get some of this to try and make some soft pads out of it and, you know, little platforms to try and improve sound deadening. So I put bits of gear on top of this stuff and see if it makes it quieter. Oh, ironically, I just found something recently. I was at an event on the weekend, they're getting rid of some of this stuff. It's like pre-cut strips of rubber. So I grabbed a bunch of that. This also is really soft. This will also be good for going these bits of equipment to help deaden the sound. We'll see how it works. Oh, cafetour. Cafetour, or some kind of cafe something. I've seen this glue mentioned. Um, is it Voltlog mentions it quite a bit? Hello, Florin. Um, if you're not familiar from Voltlog, go and check out his channel. Look for Voltlog. Okay, one word, Voltlog. No, he does mailbag stuff like I do. That's one of the other things from time to time. So this is K9119. And it's all in Chinese. But it's like a two pack. Adhesive thing, sealing. I think it was for doing like water sealing. This particular one, I think that's what it was. It goes to like an epoxy, I think it was. I don't remember. But unfortunately, there's no English on these boxes. If you want to translate it, go for it. But uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> it could be anything. Ah, okay. These are some more words got in my head. Real-time clock modules, RTC modules. These have different sized batteries that go on them. The ones I got before were smaller, shorter boards. So a close look at these. There you go, that's what's in there. It's got a Chong X capacitor in there. Chong X. Hmm. Anyway, it takes a small battery, I'm not quite sure what the size that is, was that? 2022 or 2020 or something would it be? I don't know, it's pretty small. Here's my finger scaling. So it's a I squared C interface as well. It comes with some pin headers. How nice of them. So the idea is you can use this onto a microcontroller and you can use this, this once you set the date on it, it will just keep the date maintained for, I don't know, until the battery goes flat basically. Maybe a year, maybe less, I don't know, it depends on how the battery is good, how good the battery is, um, if you run it often or not, well, I don't know. But anyway, I've got a few different modules. I did some other ones before and these are just a different style. I think it's the same chip actually, but the other ones had a um, a flash chip on the same board for some reason. I don't know why they got a flash chip on there, but uh, they do. Uh, options. Don't forget the links for all these things down below if I can provide a link for it. We've got a big package coming up yet. I know what's in there, but make sure you stick around to find out what's in it. So these are if it's just a couple of antenna, which I th don't know which brand these are for now. These will be for law anyway, they're either 868 MHz or 915 MHz. I've been buying both. I'm not sure which ones these are. It could be 915, but anyway, there'll be links for these down below. They do both types. If you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon. I've got links in my description down below for that. Helps me to buy things in my bag and bits of test gear and stuff like that. So these are a couple of switches, inline switches, 2.1mm jacks. They should plug into themselves, yes they do. It's an interesting looking pin that side actually, it's like a split pin. Hmm, I'm not sure about quality of that. We'll see, anyway, don't know what the current rating is supposed to be, I don't remember. The switch has a current rating. 2 amps, 250 volt, well, I don't think so. No low voltage ratings, which is curious, seeing as it's going to be used for low voltage. 
wouldn't use this in high voltage, would you? Yeah, I got these for my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is an SSD drive that has this 2.1mm jack on it for the inline system. So having that jack means I can stick this in line, just turn it on off with this once I've got the thing shut down. So I'm unplugging the cable, because I've got it set to automatically boot up when it gets power. You know, it's a bit of a pain, because it's a wide on my main supply in the motorhome for the events we do. So, because it runs as a web server. So I've got a couple of those. Oh, look at that. I think it's purple. Mouse pad. Cool. We want a fist to arrive. It's taken a while. Maybe next fist band below. Look yeah. out for that box. Box is coming up. Uh, feet. Rubber feet for better gear. How many things I have? I keep a stock of these things. I use them when I'm doing projects or making things. I mean, I have a equipment box that will. I don't know. Project box is what you call it, wouldn't you? Call it a project box, and you you want to put feet on that. I could use these for my voltage divider project, and I've got the box I built with those. I put some of these in the bottom so it doesn't slip around. Work really well. Just self adhesive stick on. It's nice and simple, cheap to buy. I recommend you get some of these. Right, let's do the big box. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. This thing weighs 35 kilos. It's cost me a small fortune to get it. Not only in postage, but also the actual cost of purchase and import duties and that sort of stuff. First look, what do we find? Hope it's not a box full of bricks. No, no, something in there. Excellent. Actually, it looks pretty well packaged. Oh, kind of. I see damage. I see damage. Oh. Let's fold it up so I can show you. If I can. The. You see the top one there, maybe the bottom one. The rack mounts are both bent quite significantly but hopefully um, it's prevented any other damage so I'll get this out of the box without filming um, just for the sake of ease because it's not going to be easy and then I'll have a close look at it on camera and we'll have a look at it together and you can see what it is then I don't know does that give you a clue about what it is so there you go there's the uh, damage on here those rack mounts are bent both sides are the same Hopefully the rest of it's okay. I'll have, have a look soon, but this thing is awfully heavy. Anyway, here's a proper look at it. Dash on 4700. Auto cow multifunction calibrator. So this is supposed to do everything. It's got the options in it. So, well, in theory it's got the options in it. It does have a fault. It, it is um, a faulty unit, which is great, because that's what I like. I like things that are broken, so I can fix them and do videos about them. So you'll be seeing videos about this on my main channel. These seem okay-ish, they're a bit weird the way these work, but uh, got like, this spring thing on them. I'm not quite sure how these actually work. You kind of screw on and sprung as well, I'm not quite sure how those go. Um, it's strange. This one doesn't do that, this one seems to be broken. So, yeah, I'm going to have to look into this, but there's a big split in here as well. It's probably had some impact on the front at some point. There's a scratch across the film on there, and there's a scratch across the film on that one. Hopefully the displays aren't broken. Um, they weren't broken when it was sent. Um, at least in the pictures on eBay. Um, so, yeah, I'll have to check the pictures, see if these, um, these brackets on the sides were damaged already or not. All the switches seem okay. I've had a quick go around and push a bunch of them randomly, and they all seem to be okay. Which is a good thing. These ones I'm not so worried about. These are fairly common kind of switches. These ones are a bit more specialised. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, not too bad. The back seems okay. But yeah, watch out for a future video on this thing. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, give a thumbs up, and subscribe to the main channel as well if you haven't already subscribed to that. Catch you later. Bye.